Hello everybody, this week we're finally going to be taking a look at signposts, so that's going to be objects, uh, in this case a signpost that you can place anywhere uh, in the game world that you can approach, right click on and it'll create a little speech bubble that draws uh, whatever text you want to draw from that signpost, okay? Um, we're, it's going to be made of two objects in this, we're going to make an O text that draws the, the little speech bubble itself and an O signpost that we can trigger to actually create those uh, speech bubbles. So we've already covered the basics of drawing text when we create our menu, um, so we know how to draw text, we know how to align text, and all the basic things that go along with that. We're going to turn it up a notch, just one notch, uh, for this episode by looking at how to draw a string one letter at a time, okay? So we're going to build a string up and draw it with that kind of typewriter uh, video gamey dialogue effect, right? Okay, so we see, we see the string sort of build up over time. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is going to create a new object, I'm going to call it O text, and this object is going to represent, or every instance of this object is going to be an individual text bubble. Okay, so every time we want a text bubble, we'll create an instance of O text. I'm going to add the create event first of all, and we're just going to declare some variables as we usually do. Okay, so the first variable I'm going to write is SPD equals 0.25. Uh, that's going to stand for speed. I would just write speed for clarity. But um, as you can see, that's a built-in variable, and speed would affect our position, um, which we don't want. We want to use our position to decide where we actually want to draw this text box. Okay, so if we had a speed in here, that would screw everything up. So I'm going to use SPD. Um, what that represents is the speed at which the text is going to be drawn to the screen. Okay, and it's in number of characters per frame. So one, a speed of one would be one character every frame. Um, a speed of two would be two characters every frame, and 0.25 is one character every four frames. Letters is going to be our next variable, which is just going to be zero. That's going to determine how many letters we should currently be drawing to the screen. So obviously it's going to start at zero and it's going to build up over time to be the number of characters in the string we're going to draw. Speaking of which, the next variable is text, which is the string that we're going to draw. Um, I'm just going to put a default string in here for now, which is going to be this is a test string. And then I'm going to do just to demonstrate uh, backslash n, which um, is a, symbolizes a line break. Okay, so backslash n, um, anything we put after this will be on the second line. We can do as many of those as we want um, to add more line breaks. Um, I'm just going to do one and put second line here so that we can test that out. Uh, length equals string length text. Um, that is just going to return how long this is in characters, okay? Um, just literally the, the number of characters including spaces and that that are in that string. Uh, text current is going to equal a blank string, okay? Um, just by putting two quotation marks like that we've got a blank empty string. Uh, text current as you might imagine is going to equal sum of text depending on what letters is. So when letters is four, text current should equal this, okay? The first four letters. When it's five, it'll equal this with a space and, and so on, okay? Um, w equals zero. Um, H equals zero, and that's gonna be width and height. Um, border is another one that's gonna be 10. Uh, let's go and add the step event now, and this is going to be where we progress our string, okay? So I'm just going to call that progress text, okay? So we start off with letters at zero, so what we're going to do is add SPD to letters every frame. So letters plus equal SPD, okay? Take letters, add SPD to it, and then text underscore current is going to be updated to be string copy, which as you might imagine copies one string to another, um, text, but we also get to put in um, where to copy from and how much to copy. So it doesn't just copy the entire string, because obviously there'd be no point, we may as well just write text current equal text if we want to do that, and it copies a certain amount. Um, so we're going to start from the first letter, okay? Typically with these kind of things you might be expecting a zero, as tends to be the first entry and lots of programmy type things, but here it's it's one, okay, from the first letter, don't do zero. Then we just need the amount um, that we want to copy, so I'm going to put letters, okay? Um, however many letters there are, copy in. Um, just so that rounds correctly, because uh, we are increasing by 0.25, 
uh, every frame. Um, I'm not entirely sure. It might floor it automatically. I'm not actually 100% sure, but for safety, I'm just going to do that. Um, just so that when we have 1.75 letters, that comes out as one letter and we can predict and um, predict that behavior more clearly rather than not being... I'm not 100% sure how it would round if we put letters in. If you know, leave a comment. Maybe that's a wasted line. I don't know. Um, next up, uh, we're going to do draw set font uh, F sign. Okay, I've created a font for this. Um, you might want to as well. I realize I skipped this step out, but I've, I've created a new font called F sign. It's just going to be the text I'm using for the signpost. Okay. Um, you can use whatever font that you want to for this. I'll probably put a link in the description or something to help you get this font if you want to use exactly what I've been doing. Um, but you can use whatever font you want. Okay. The reason we're setting the font here and not in the, the draw event, um, is because we need to get the height and width of the string in pixels. Like, if we were to theoretically draw the string, how wide would it be and how tall would it be? Because that's going to help us determine how big the box needs to be in um, in the draw event. Okay. Um, so speaking of, we do if h equals zero, which we know it does um, in the create event here. Okay. If h is zero, then we're going to set h to equal string height text. The reason we do that if is just so that you know we're not updating every single frame. We'll optimize wherever we can while keeping things simple, you know. <laughs> um, so what that does, as I say, it pretends it's going to draw um, this text to the screen, okay? And that's the full line text, not text current. Um, and if it does, how high would that be in pixels? Okay, what height would that take up in pixels? And that takes your draw settings into account. So it's going to take into account what font we have set. So obviously different fonts would be different sizes and so on. Okay, so make sure you set the font before correctly before ever using a function like string height or string width. Okay, so a mistake I make a lot and I always wonder why things aren't getting the sizes I expect because it's using different fonts. Um, okay, so... After that, W is going to equal string width uh, text current. Okay, so that's going to take whatever text we're currently on and use that as the width of the box. So that will build up over time as well. Um, but it'll always be wide enough to contain whatever our current text is. Um, after we've done this, um, we can just destroy when done. Okay, so once we've drawn the whole thing to the screen, we don't want to just kill it immediately, you know, give, give the player a chance to read it. What we'll do is say if letters greater than equal to length, um, which should be obvious what that does now, okay, so if the number of letters we're drawing is longer than the current string, and it'll keep increasing after the string, so, but it doesn't really matter. Um, if that's true, instance destroy, and with o camera follow equals o player, okay, because we're going to also write in a thing to um, when we create these in the first place uh, to make the camera focus on the text box, okay, so that like it sort of draws the player's attention sort of thing, almost a bit cutscene like, so it just sort of focuses in on it. Um, oh, but of course we didn't, have, sorry, I said we don't want to actually destroy this right away when we finished it. We want to give the player a chance to read it. So I'm going to add an and up here, which is going to be, we're going to add it with keyboard, check, press, uh, VK, any key. Okay, just keep it nice and simple for now. So if the user presses any key and uh, we've, we've drawn the full text box, we'll get rid of the text box. Okay, we'll assume the player is doing other things and we don't, they don't need to see this text anymore. So that's our step event all finished now. So that will build the string up over time and allow us to just quickly dismiss it when we're done just by pressing any button. All right. Now all we need to do is actually start drawing it to the screen. Let's talk a bit about how it's actually going to look and how we're going to do that. So we're going to draw a blank rounded rectangle. Okay. And it's going to have this little pokey triangle at the bottom just to sort of symbolize where the text box is coming from. Maybe it's coming from a character or a signpost, in this case a signpost. And what we're going to do is draw this text box with its origin being kind of its center bottom, okay? So we're going to use that to determine where to draw the triangle, and we're going to use that to we're going to use that position as the basis on where to draw the rectangle itself, okay? So this means we're going to get half the width of the the rectangle in order to sort of draw it outwards from this point, 
and also a couple of buffer values just to sort of draw it a little bit further than the size of the text, okay? Because we don't want to draw the text like right to the edge of the rectangle. We want to add in a little bit of a buffer as well, okay? The reason we use the center point is it makes it a lot easier uh, for us whenever we want to create a new text box. We can just sort of position it at the entity that's creating the text box minus a little bit in the y direction um, rather than say having to calculate every for every text box like where the top left should be which would be the, the sort of other obvious one to use okay so middle bottom is a really good one to use and that's going to be the basis for this okay so you can already see i've also created s marker this little um, triangle sprite that's going to be the thing at the, just the bottom of the speech box and the rest is just going to be a black rounded rectangle okay you'll notice in this as well actually i've put the origin point like one pixel above the sprite um i'd include this in the like the downloadable assets thing i tend to include but like i think you can all probably draw a black triangle by yourselves um as i say it's not top center of the origin it's one pixel off the top and that's just to make sure it doesn't overlap the rectangle uh why that's important is because we're going to reduce the alpha and make them slightly transparent so if they overlap you'll see a little bit of a black line coming in which we obviously don't want okay okay so with that out of the way let's finally create the draw event so create the draw event and the first thing we want to do is get half the width of the box okay um, so var half w equals w times 0.5 okay and then draw the box is what we're going to do next draw set color so the color we're currently drawing with c black okay just a simple constant just to pick black uh, draw set alpha that's setting our transparency to 0 0.5 okay so half transparency draw round rect underscore ext and that allows us to draw a rounded rectangle and define kind of the radius of the edges okay it's just a nice simple tool the x so we need to provide it with an x coordinate a y coordinate and another x and y coordinate okay so the top left and the bottom right of where the rectangle needs to be so you might think well if we're drawing this from the top left it'd be easy we could just do x and y but we're not we're drawing it from the bottom center as we went uh, as we discussed so we're drawing it at x minus half w which is half the width of the string remember and then minus border okay border is that value that we just set to 10 um in the create event that's just going to give us an extra 10 pixels buffer in um in every direction okay just a, a margin we could have called it margin actually that might have been a better variable name um the first y coordinate is just going to be y wherever we are minus h so minus the height of the box um also minus border times two because we need to account for the margin on the bottom as well as on top when we do that uh comma uh, the second x coordinate is going to be x this time plus half w plus border okay so it's just the same but the other direction and the final y coordinate is just going to be y okay because we've already accounted for the border in uh, the first y coordinate there all right um so that's the coordinates for that all sorted out the radius x and radius y i'm just going to put as 15 and 15 shouldn't really use magic numbers like that but um it's quick and simple uh false uh, what i mean by magic numbers is like just putting a number in rather than a variable that we can change and define in here if you'd like to do that that's a good idea it's good practice um i'm just being quick um so outline false is just going to say that this isn't an outline of a round rectangle this is a filled rectangle okay um close that bracket is that all my brackets closed it is cool put a semicolon on the end of that Okay, I'm going to big this up actually, it's probably, probably better, um, we can see a bit clearer what's going on. Next up we're just going to draw that little triangle that appears at the bottom of the rectangle, okay, so draw sprite, simple enough, and we've still got alpha at 0 0.5 remember, so it's going to already draw this at half alpha, s marker, and because of the way we set up our origin, um, uh, sub image 0 because it's just the one frame, uh, because of the way we set up our origin, we can literally just put the coordinates as x and y. All right, and that's where it's going to be because our origin is one pixel above the top y coordinate, so it'll draw it sort of one below. If you haven't done that and you've made it top center, you'll need to do y plus one. Okay. All right. Um, so that's drawing the sprite, and then we set a draw sprite alpha back to. Uh, not draw sprite alpha. Sorry, draw set alpha 
back to one, okay? Because we want to draw. We don't want to, if we leave that at 0.5, the whole game will keep drawing at 0.5 transparency, and that would be rubbish. Next up, we want to draw the text. So draw text. Um, now I'm going to use a script, um, a script I've made called a draw set text. I'm just going to put it on the screen so you can see it. Um, you don't have to use this. Um, I made this as a way of, you'll remember in the menu where I went over how you need to set draw set font, draw set H align, V align every single time that you want to do text, okay? Um, and color as well. Always remember to do these four things every time you actually want to draw some text, okay? Uh, the reason being, if you forget to do them, you'll accidentally, when you do do them, because you actually wanted to change those things in a different thing, you'll forget that you didn't explicitly set them in an earlier thing and uh, wonder why you've accidentally changed how all your text is drawing, okay? So in each individual draw event, make sure you've done this at least once where you're drawing text. Um, but I've, what I've done is I've buried them all in a script to help me do that because I'm sick of looking at these four lines over and over again. So I've made a script just called draw set text. Um, so I can put the color, the font, the horizontal alignment, the vertical alignment just on one line. Okay, so just one line, um, one line of code just to set these four things. Okay, just makes it easier, tightens up the code a little bit, um, just uh, makes it a little easier to read. And uh, by forcing you to do all four of them, because it actually requires all four arguments, um, you don't forget, okay? <laughs> um, so you can use that if you want. I'll leave it on the screen, you can pause it, you can copy it down. There'll probably be a paste bin in the description, so you can copy this uh, script. It's very useful just throughout development of any kind of game, all right? So back to the draw event. I'm gonna do that script now, which is draw, set, text. You might also wonder uh, why not you know, draw, set, text like this. Um, which would make perfect sense, but I like my personal scripts to look like this is my naming convention for scripts. I always use capital letters um, with words with no spaces, um, and I just have them as as, as complete words like that. Um, the only the, the only thing I capitalize like this as well because they're big important things and it helps distinguish them uh, from everything else, and it helps distinguish that these are my scripts as well. That these are my scripts. Um, rather than something that's built into Game Maker, okay, so it helps me in that way as well. So draw set text. I uh, just need to pass across the color. So for me, this is C uh, white, I believe. Yeah, C white. We want to draw white text. Um, the font is F sign. The alignment uh, left is uh, the horizontal alignment. Sorry, is F A center, and the vertical alignment is F A top. Okay. Let's just add that space in there, keep that consistent. Um, so if, if you don't have the script, you'll just obviously want to call draw set color, draw set font, draw set H align, and draw set V align, okay? For those different things, there's four lines. But now I can just do it in one, so that's cool. Uh, draw text, uh, X, Y, um, Oh, sorry, it's X, Y minus H minus border, just to get it right at the top, because we've top aligned this. And the text we're gonna draw is just text current. Okay, it's that string that we've been building up. That should be everything, actually, I think. So what I'm gonna do now is just put uh, one of these into the game. Uh, we have created a layer for this, just called entities, that I've just put sort of near where the player is. I'm just gonna drag in O text to here, okay? So let's now see what that actually looks like. So let's run the game, start new game. This is a test string, second line. Okay, and then we press any button and it goes away. And restart that, just see it again. The test string, you see the box is building up over time as well. And the second line appears, press any button, all goes away. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna create the signpost, okay? I've created a sprite for this already, just middle center. Uh, origin on it, it's just a daft little signpost, you can make whatever whatever sprite you want for this. I'm um, just called it S sign, and I'm going to make a new object called O sign. Set the sprite as appropriate, and I'm only going to have one event in this. I'm going to add the mouse global, global right pressed. Okay, so that event triggers whenever the right uh, mouse key is pressed just anywhere, okay? If I just put right pressed, um, like in the, the mouse, uh, right pressed, I'd have to right click the mouse on top of the object, okay? Um, global right press just means I can press it anywhere. 
Uh, how I'm going to do it is I'm, I'm going to keep it really straightforward and simple because it's getting long enough as is. Uh, we're just going to make it so that if the player is within, say, 64 pixels of the signpost and we right click, um, we'll show the text. Okay. Something you might want to look into after this, um, and you've basically got all the tools you need now to be able to do this yourself, and I'm going to show you one of those important tools in the very next line of code we write, and say if you are within a certain distance of the signpost, uh, maybe draw a little arrow above it or something like that, or a little prompt that says, like, press this button to read the signpost, okay? Or, you know, something like that. A um, little arrow would probably work really well. Um, so that might be a fun thing to do yourself. As I say, you've got all the tools to do that. I'm going to show you one of them right now, which is if point in, let's big this up actually, there we go, uh, 12, if point in circle o player dot x, o player dot y, x, y, 64. Okay, so what do we think this does? That checks to see if a certain point is in a certain circle. The point we're looking at is wherever the player currently is. Uh, the circle we're looking at is a circle at position x, y, so wherever the sign is, of radius 64. So diameter 128. So if you're within 64 pixels of the sign, this will return true. So you can see how you would then use that as a similar thing to check to see whether or not to draw like a little arrow above it or something like that, right? Um, the other thing we want to check, of course, is if uh, there are no current instances of O text. So in no instance exists O text. Okay, so we don't want to create more than one of these at a time. Um, if that's true, if I got those right, yeah, that's the right number of brackets. That's something I screw up a lot, so I always have to check. With instance create layer x, y, uh, y minus 64 rather. Let's make sure we create this text bubble above the signpost, not just immediately uh, like at its center. Um, layer can be just the layer we're on for now. You might want to create your own dedicated layer, but I don't want to have to copy that into each room. So I'm just going to say we'll do it on the layer. If it creates problems, we'll look into a fix, but it's, it's fine for now. Um, the object we're going to make is O text. Okay. So that's going to create a text box and it'll by running this function, this function returns the ID of that text box, okay? So this ID is going to be what is put into this with statement. So anything that we write in here will be applied to this text box that we've just created. So what we want to do is set text of the text box to equal other.text, okay? And what that means is in this object, we're actually going to define text. Um, and I'll, I'll, we'll do this in like the, the room editor. So every time we place a sign, we can set each sign to be a different bit of text and so on. But the point is the text object is going to get its text from other.text, which is O signs text. Okay, so whatever text whatever text equals in O sign, which is currently nothing, but we'll fix that soon. Uh, length equals string underscore length text, because we'll need to do that again to get the length of the new string, okay? because we've just changed what that string should be. And the other thing we want to do in here is set that camera focus, as I said before. So with O camera, uh, follow equals uh, other dot ID. Okay. Um, so we'll focus the camera in on the signpost theoretically. Okay. Uh, with the borders and stuff, I'm not sure how noticeable that'll be, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. All right, so that's everything in terms of how a signpost should work. So now we need to actually define the text of a signpost. If you're using Game Maker Studio 2 for this, uh, what you can do, which is really cool, is go to Variable Definitions and hit Add, and we'll add text as a variable definition in here, set type to be string, and we'll just write default in there as the string, okay? What that means is now every time we place one of these in the room editor, um, we can very easily change this variable without even having to go into instance create code or anything like that. So let's go into room one. Let's get rid of that O text and put in a sign instead. In fact, we'll put it, we'll put it somewhere else. We'll put it over here. Um, yeah, just about there will do. Now, if I double click this, um, we can go to variables and we can just edit uh, the default variable of 
just this specific instance, okay? So we can place as many of these signs as we want and they can all have different text. Um, I'm gonna set this to be, uh, please don't murder anyone. Uh, new line, the park ranger. <laughs> okay, and that's gonna be my string for this signpost. All right, if you're not using Game Maker Studio 2, um, you can still accomplish this just by going to, every time you place one of these, go to creation code and writing in text equals and then blah, blah, and make that, make your string that way, okay? It will work just the same. But if you're using GMS2, as I say, um, it's, it's all set up so you can nicely handle it from the variables window. And that's quite cool. So let's see if this all works now. Let's run this. Run the game, uh, murder all these guys, come up here, right click on this, please don't murder anyone in the park ranger, uh, whoops, guess we kind of, kind of already did. Okay, and there you have it, um, if I, is the, can we see the, yeah, you can see the camera is focusing in on it as well, and then when we move away the camera comes back to the player. All right, subtle, but you can, you can see it, it's there, okay? So this is really basic, and there's lots of ways we could improve this. As I say, um, something I suggest you go away and look into how to do um, is like making a little arrow that maybe appears over here or something just to indicate that we can now activate the sign, that we're in range, that kind of thing. Um, I could have added it in this video, but like I kind of wanted to leave there something for you guys to go out and do that and show you how to, you know, um, start encouraging you to use the tools that I've, I've given you here in uh, in new ways, okay? Because I can only ever teach you how to make stuff that already exists, and uh, if you're just copying all my code, you're not you're not really super learning anything, are you? Um, so, um, so yeah, use what you've learned. See if you can come up with a way to make that appear over there. And in future episodes of this, we might make the uh, the text box a bit fancier. There's all kinds of things we could do to make it fancier and prettier. Um, lots of people like looking into how you do like Undertale style effects where each letter renders differently and you can do uh, like you can recolor certain bits of text and so on and so forth. The way you do that um, is to make it so instead of rendering one string that builds up over time, you render each individual letter, okay? Um, that way you can do fancy effects and recolor certain bits of strings and make them wavy and do all kinds of fun fancy effects. But that's beyond the scope of this video. Okay, um, hope you enjoyed that guys and I'll catch you guys next time. Shout out as always to all of my amazing Patreon supporters without whom I couldn't be doing any of this work. A huge shout out in particular and in no particular order as always to Mark Lintz, Louis R. Pereira, Doan Techben, Brandon Kelly, Dan, Inner Mule, Chris Maher, Andreas Tabak, Gummy Tainman, James Grumley, Badia Yahya, Mark Day, Harold Guidry, Matt Coate, Nathaniel Walsh, Fisk McTaggart, Nick Slavish, Stephen Hagen, Henry Wirtz, Michael Ward, Jason McMillan, Seanathan, Crispy, Owen Morgan, Zanan Mai, Bowser the Dog, TJ, and Patrick Guffey. Thank you all so much for your support. If you want to get involved in the work that I do, if you want to vote on the kind of topics that I cover, or just generally you want to see my work carry on and get bigger and better, uh, you can join these cool kids by supporting me over at patreon.com forward slash seanjs. It'll be a thing you can click on my face. You can click on my face if you want to do any of that. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.